Hi everyone, I uh, just wanted to let you know that this is a continuation from the first video in my series where I unboxed and assembled the Weber Master Touch kettle and today I'm continuing on with part two so I hope you enjoy it and here we go. Okay, so I've decided while I've got this in the shop, I'm going to do one of the modifications right now and that is going to be installing the port for the thermometer. Uh, what I have is I have one of the Weber Smoky Mountain uh, grommets that allows for the probes to go through and then it stays sealed up uh, once it's through or once it's removed it seals it up for the most part so that you don't get any airflow through this grommet. Um, and what you require for this is a step bit. So what I'll be doing is masking off the kettle so that I don't damage the paint or the finish. I'll drill a pilot hole, possibly two pilot holes, and then I'll be using this step bit uh, that goes from uh, half an inch or actually three eighths all the way up to one and three eighths. And I do believe I need the one and three eighths, the full size of this bit uh, for this grommet. So I'll be doing that. So here we go. Hopefully there's no issues. So just going to mask off uh, the section where I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to keep it as tight to the uh, rim as I can, maybe down about a quarter of an inch, um, just because uh, on the inside, the inside top grill is down about what looks like two to two and a half inches from the top. So I'm just going to mask this off and uh, just just in case of blowout on the back side, I don't know that this will do anything, but I'm actually going to just put a piece of masking tape on the inside as well. Might actually double that up. I'm sure it will be fine, but better safe than sore. And in fact, just for safe measure, one more. So I have about two layers of masking tape there and now what I'll do is mark the center point and get that ready. Okay, so in order to keep things symmetrical and clean looking, I'm going to measure the distance from the handle all the way around to the lid rest on one side and just sort of find the center point. So I'm just going to kind of bend my tape around the grill get a rough measurement. I just want to get kind of close to the middle. So it looks to be about 20 and a half inches. So I guess halfway is actually if I pull it a little it is right around the 20 inch but when I eyeball it I kind of feel like my eyeballs are better in the tape on this one just because I can't seem to get the tape to sit where I want it to be. Actually what I'm going to use now that I look at it, I'm just going to show you real quick here. I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the, I'm just going to adjust this real quick here so you can see what I'm thinking. I'm going to use the ash handle, the catcher handle because it's basically centered between the two legs and I'm just gonna draw a plumb line straight up and use that so that there's some symmetry to where my hole is placed. Now that I look at it I feel like that's a better option. So so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of eyeball a plumb line directly up from that ash catcher handle uh, to Spin a bit here. Too much. Okay, so I got the line I want there. And now I'm just going to sort of eyeball this grommet and I'm going to leave, you know, kind of a quarter inch, the thickness of a pencil. Just double check on the inside. I think we're good there. So if I sort of eyeball the center of that. Looks like we're right about there. This will be my 
center point on my first pilot hole, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in two steps. I'm gonna start with eighth inch, then I'm gonna move up to quarter inch as far as my bit size goes, and then that will allow me to then move into my step bit. So, um, this is uh, a little nerve wracking because I'm drilling into this brand new grill. So I'll go a little bit slow here on this first one and uh, hopefully no issues. So nice and slow to start. That's a pretty durable metal there. This bit is either very dull or this is gonna take me a little while. All right, hence the reason for the tape. Okay, just clean that out a bit. Okay. inch now. Okay, trying to be a little more guarded on this one now and Quarter inch, done. Moving on to the step bit. This is where things become a little nerve wracking. This is a big bit, so there we go. All right, step bit. Okay, so my step bit made it all the way through. My battery died as I was drilling that one, so I just had to charge up a bit, but we're through now and uh, I think everything looks good. So uh, what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm just gonna basically take a round file. I'm gonna take a round file and I'm just gonna kinda clean up the edges a bit so that it's not so sharp. It's going to be covered by the grommet anyways, but uh, you'll see in a second why, because I'm going to hit this with a coat of high heat paint. So, I'm going to pull the tape. I might have to re-tape this after. But, want to be able to see what we're looking at here. So, just feeling that, feels pretty good. I have one burr here that is being a little stubborn. So what we'll do now is I think we'll do a test fit on this before I go any further. And I'm not sure how And that went quite well. So that went in really good. So I feel there's a little play 
maybe didn't need to go to the full size of that step bit, but there's no, definitely no gaps showing, so it's fine as far as that goes. So I'm happy with that. We'll pop that back out. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go over it again with tape, and then we're going to cut that hole out, and the tape will actually serve as a um, mask uh, for paint, because I'm going to go over it next with, just to cover that raw steel with, uh, with some paint, some high heat paint, so that that never rusts. Hopefully never. I just want to now go over this. Now I'm just masking the, the grill off because I don't want to get any paint on the grill. Using the hole underneath as my guide. So now all that's exposed is just the raw steel. And I'm just going to use the rasp one more time just to make sure there's no covering where I want paint. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a piece of tape on the inside. Just kind of loose, uh, not right tight against the hole, but loose against the hole. Just because I'm going to spray from this side and uh, that will stop the paint from spraying through into the inside of the grill. So, doing that there. There. So now in theory, I'm going to be using uh, this, this high heat trim clad, I think it is, or armor coat, high heat paint. For barbecues, I use it sometimes on like uh, fire pits and stuff like that. So, this one's been out in the cold all winter, so I don't know if it's the highest quality, but I really just need it to just do the inside of this hole real quick. I just did it test shot onto some cardboard to make sure the nozzle's clear, so just gonna Okay, that's what I don't want to happen is that drip, so I'm just gonna take a piece here and wipe. Just don't want any drips at all. We'll just let that sit for five or ten minutes. I might hit it with a heat gun just to sort of cure it a little bit quicker and then we'll do a, maybe a second coat just to be sure. Okay, so actually I'm pretty happy with just one coat. I think it's cured enough and I don't know that I'm going to need two. So I'm just going to take this tape off now. So 
So it looks like we have good coverage with the paint. I don't really see any raw steel. So I'm just gonna take a shot towel here and just quickly buff up around the hole where the rubbing was. And I think we're dry, yeah. Dry. Good. Okay, so there's our finished hole, which you can't see unless I hold something behind it, but a hole there. So we're gonna pop this grommet in and just see where it gets us to. Yeah. Good. So there it is, all finished. Grommet is in. Grill is safe. Uh, that was a little nerve-wracking drilling into that, but I feel pretty good how it turned out. And both inside and out, looks like there's nothing to be concerned about. Just a little residue from my painter's tape. So all good in that end. So now what I'll do is um, we're just going to test out and make sure that. The height of this is good on the inside once I put the grate in, so I'll be right back once I get that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just spin the grill around now, so that you can see inside with the grommet over here, and I'm just going to grab the inside grate, and we'll just put this in and see Alright, so that's pretty much perfect. I mean, both uh, ports, there's a lower and an upper port. Um, both of those, can just maybe zoom in here, lower and upper ports, and basically the bottom of that grommet lines up almost perfectly with the top of the grate, so I couldn't have asked for better placement. And, uh, that worked out pretty good actually so I'm quite happy with that so there we go first mod on my master touch is a success so on to the next okay so last modification I'm gonna make before we get uh, this out to the backyard is I'm going to just this here uh, we're going to do the markings of where the vent is located as far as the open and closed. Uh, a lot of people on YouTube do this as well. Um, I've seen other, other grills done it uh, this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to obviously look inside and I'm going to basically measure where the grill is a percentage open and then a larger percentage and then fully open. So. I think what I'll do is I'll start with fully open, which is right, right about there. I'm just going to make a mark with my pencil, just enough so I can see it. Uh, you may not be able to pick that up on the camera, but I can see it here, so make that a little more prominent. Okay. And then I see everybody else, the way they do this is they usually do it in thirds, so I'll kind of do the same thing, because I think if I do it in, trying to divide this space up from here to here into quarters, um, or even just in half, I mean, I guess I could do half. Half right there. And then I could always just guesstimate where one quarter and three quarters is, but I kind of like the idea of doing one third, two thirds. So let's see here. What do I think? That's about that's about one third there. And that's about two thirds. Gosh, it's sure. is close between those two. That's about half. 
about uh, about well, two thirds. So I've got one third, two thirds, folio. Okay. So I've got that marked now. It's funny, everything between fully open and all the way to the other side is pretty much open and open. I guess they, they kind of account for some travel inside to brush the ashes to one side. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm actually going to use, a, I have a Dremel, so I'm going to be basically using a uh, bit on it and I, all I'm gonna do I see a lot of other people see I've seen a few things I've seen people make like stat like poke marks or drill holes or mark it with a um, felt marker um, people put slits in it uh, with like a, a saw blade or something like that but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a small notch just basically from the bottom up, just like a sixteenth of an inch, just enough so that I can recognize where it's at. Because I don't really need this to be a standout marking that anybody can see from a distance. I, I want to be able to get close up and do it on my own. So I'm going to do this here and uh, it's going to get loud so I'll probably fast forward this once I get this edited in, in post here. So here we go. Okay, so not sure if you can see those, but I'm gonna clean them up just with my round files. I can. Nope, that's too big. Guess I'm not. I guess I'll just leave it. I really don't want to touch it with any sandpaper or anything like that. I just want it to be just enough of a mark that I can recognize where it is. So just sort of bring you in a little closer. And there you have it guys, uh, my Weber Touch first modification and final video. Here's the grill out on the deck all ready to go. Uh, you can see the port that I installed in the pictures here. And I can't wait to get this thing fired up, hopefully later today and tomorrow. Next video coming soon, stay tuned.